Hi there, and welcome to this month's podcast. I think that this is probably going to be the last podcast in this kind of format. I've had an idea. I'm not ready to share it with you because it's based on something that's quite personal. But I've had a good idea that I think may work, may not. The whole point of this Crow Hill adventure is to try some stuff. And uh, if it doesn't work, we change it, tweak it or abandon it. And we're coming up to our first birthday and I look forward to sharing with you the things that did work and didn't work. We're all here for the music and there's no greater example of that than our very special guest this month, Lewis McLaughlin. I'm alone by the rising sea And the water's climbing up to me And the mountains don't feel high no more Cause the waves turned her sides into shores You You keep the flame burning true When a war comes glaring on my screen And I wish it's something never seen But the power of greed can ruin time Losing mothers, watching children cry Something that we'd miss Couldn't place a finger You don't need to be afraid Sometimes bad times Come from the plans that aren't laid Oh, 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 oh. You, you keep this thing burning and true So we've got an interview with Lewis to find out what he's been up to, where he's from, and uh, to talk about his wonderful music. But also he's going to play us out with another wonderful song later. So do stick around for that. We're all a bit exhausted here at Crow Hill because we've been up to so much, not least the team that's behind the new app that we've created. If you haven't checked that out yet, Check out the video description down below. Your experience of Crow Hill is about to change radically with an app that's been purpose built to enable you to have real control over the tools that you get from Crow Hill and how you integrate them with your workflow. What's more, and it's taken five months longer than we'd hoped, and I'm sorrowful about that, uh, vaults. We've come out of beta, so if you've not experienced those yet, again, linked in the video description down below. But if you have got them, 
I would advise downloading them again from the new Crow Hill app. You'll get a much better experience, but also be able to pick and choose what vaults you have. At the end of this month, the first vault is going to drop out. Now, you can download these and use these for the rest of your life, but basically there's only going to be six at a time. So each vault that drops in will stay there for six months and then drop out. And it's a strict last in, first out policy. So this month we'll be finishing the extended tenure of the Attic Grand, the very close cousin to the world famous soft piano. So we thought we'd ask of you a composer challenge. What about a sad song, a lament for the Attic Piano played on the piano? And as I've said so often on this vlog, it's all about starving your resources. So how about just a piano piece? You, a piano, and your music. As you may or may not be aware, we're also currently running a challenge for Audio Incubator Nay Piano Book. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to coincide the announcement of the winner of this Composer channel, along with this collaborative effort of making a sample library together, at the town hall we'll be holding in London on the 7th. You don't have to be a piano book or an Audio Inc. user. If you just want to come along, you're a Crow Hill user, you'd be most welcome. But again, check out the video description down below. And if you can fire us an RSVP on Eventbrite, we'll know that we may need more than a table in a pub in King's Cross. I'll tell you about the prize for this month's Composer Challenge after this, an interview with the fantastically talented Lewis McLaughlin. And thanks so much for Anna for conducting this interview so brilliantly. Well, thanks for coming. No worries, thanks for having me. <laughs> You started writing music when you were 14. Yeah, right? I started songwriting when I was 14. Yeah, but you kind of did it, it in secret. Is yeah, right? I did it in secret. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of inspired you to start first write and why did you kind of keep it behind closed doors at first? I, I guess the inspiration was because I grew up playing folk music, like tribe music. I was a fiddle player. Well, I still am. Um, but it was always like instrumental music. So that was my comfort zone. Um and had also grown up listening to songwriters and stuff through my parents showing me music and mum's a songwriter. Um, but when I was like 14, I listened to an artist, I don't know if you, you, might, you maybe haven't heard of them, they're called uh, Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> done a wee bit, done a few albums and I was just obsessed with uh, obsessed with Springsteen and Tom Petty. But also a band called The Villagers, I don't know if you know The Villagers, they're an Irish band. Um, Conor O'Brien's the songwriter I heard one of his albums and it changed my life it was just like so the songwriting was just like this this little world that I could uh, immerse myself in so kind of yeah I got into it through finding those sort of artists and Bonnie Iver as well and so many different artists um, but I think I don't know it was just like being 14 and also not being it's, I wasn't in my comfort zone with it yet I couldn't tell anyone that I was doing it I was like quietly play in my room and write stuff and I guess at that point it was uh I, I started songwriting as a way to like um process my f emotions because I didn't know how to do that in the rest of life um so yeah it was something that I kind of held really close to my chest for ages and I started doing gigs I started doing pub gigs on Leith, like up and down Leith Walk um kind of like 2 p.m. on a Sunday, for like an eight, under 18 gig, and I wouldn't tell anyone, like no one knew about it for ages. I would just like run off and do it. Um, Did you find that was quite a good way to do it? Because it I think I needed it at that point, yeah, because I don't know, it was like something about playing to people that you don't know, that aren't probably aren't even listening at that point, um, was easier than like playing it to people that I know. I still get it, it's like, I don't know. If you know, if people know about your life and when you're singing these personal things, it can be a bit more, feel more exposing than singing to people you don't know. So, yeah, I think that was the secret part. And obviously, yeah, at some point um, I was found out. <laughs> and How were you found out? I remember you and my brother, you and a couple other pals. I must have told him where I can't remember. And they ended up at the pub. Um I think they must have known that I was playing. Maybe I told them and they came and saw me play. 
And then ever since then, it was like, oh, it's actually not so bad when people hear it. And mm. then maybe, yeah, my folks came to a gig. But yeah, started doing little gigs on Leith Walk and stuff. And yeah, showing people that I knew it more and yeah, getting comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then from doing like the gigs in the Edinburgh venues and stuff, what was then the next step? I saw that you work with, I don't know how to say, is it Andy? Andy, yeah, yeah. Andy Monaghan. Andy yeah. from uh, Frightened Rabbits. Yeah, yeah, so he's over in Glasgow, he's got a studio. Um, and yeah, I guess from moving to Glasgow, um, hooked up with him and started, uh, yeah, just kind of started as, I uh, had a few songs, a few demos and stuff. Um, one of which was Summer, which was just the, this song that, it was like the fourth song I've ever written. And I had this demo of it, of me like fanning about in my bedroom. And then started recording it and then ended up making a record, the first album with him. And yeah, it all, all kind of builds from there. But I think moving to Glasgow was a big step for me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Finding my feet in the scene and starting to make more contacts and stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And is that the one that you ended up going playing in Glastonbury? Yeah, so BBC? that's the song that made all the crazy stuff happen in 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, that all, like the, the Emerging Talent competition happened like... Two weeks after the album launch, we did the album launch in the Hug and Pint. Um, and I think we knew that we were going down at that point. There was like a final in Pilton, not Pilton here, Pilton uh, in Somerset. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that kicked off all, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. was a lot to do with that song, which is weird because it's a song that I wrote when I was like 6, 15 or something. And then, so the one that you've just released now. Yeah. Um, that is your second one. Yeah, so that's my second yeah. album, and it came out on the second of second of August, which was last month. Yeah, still September. Mm-hmm. How did you find? Because for this one, being in a band and collaborating with people, yeah. How did you find that instead of it being all just all on your own? Yeah, I mean, it is great because the people that I play with are like, um, I pretty much everyone I work with, I was either I'm either related to or I went to school with. <laughs> um, so we're all a quite a close knit bunch, mm-hmm. um, which is nice. What nice instruments have you got? So the band, as its full uh, outing, is drums. Stephen on Stark on drums, uh, Finley Johnson on bass, who went to Broughton as well. We were just talking about Jack, someone <laughs> man behind the camera here, um, is another Broughton boy. Um, and then Chloe Bryce plays fiddle and synths. Donald Barker plays keys and guitar and sings. And then Ewan, my brother Ewan McLaughlin, plays the guitar as well. Um, so, yeah, we all kind of went to school or, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know them all very, very well. So it's mm-hmm. nice to have that. Um, yeah, nice to have that with people that you kind of are on the road with and spend a lot of time with. Mm-hmm. See the first one? Uh-huh. What was that one called? It's called Burn and True. Um, could you tell us about what yeah. it's about? Yeah, so um, I get, we were speaking about it earlier. Um, it's kind of just about um, seeing all of these horrible world events go on from your phone and feeling quite detached from it and quite powerless to like do anything. Um, and overwhelmed, I guess. Um, but through that, just trying to um, keep some posit- positivity, keep the hope alive and stuff. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the, the album's called a, a hope, hope and fear. fear, yeah. So I guess, and it's, we, yeah, we also touched on that earlier. I guess it's like that's quite external things going on, but a lot of it is a bit more internal mm-hmm. about my own like, uh, my own journey through like um, anxiety and sort of finding uh, um finding positivity and stuff and, mm-hmm. and positive mindsets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's a lot to do with that. Yeah, so it's quite a. It's quite a happy album. I feel like I never uh, expected to make an album with so much uh, happiness in it, <laughs> which is nice. It's nice to say that, but um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's not always the way. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Is because you said when you were younger, you kind of used like writing songs and the music as a way to process your feelings as well. Do you feel like you do the same now? But you've obviously you're grown up with the whole world so it's sure. like how do i process the world and yeah, is that uh, kind yeah. of what this kind of album is? i think that that that, that like um there is still a part of me that does that it's like it's a way to it's like you know some people have to write a diary or something to like 
just put down what they're thinking about stuff so it's mm-hmm. that it's always been like that I've never really kept a diary but I've always sort of written um just writing about your feelings in a fancy way really mm-hmm. <laughs> I've also spoke to you before once about like with you talk to your kind of fan base mm-hmm. and I remember you told me that your email mailing list mm-hmm. has always been quite like a strong one for you yeah and you like to write kind of kind of bloggy kind yeah, of yeah styles yeah. about that when did that start and what like what do you also get out of it and uh i can't remember when it started um i haven't had it for too long maybe in the last couple of years since the first album um yeah i guess it's just it, the with social media and stuff it can be hard to i feel like a lot of social media is just like trying to push through the noise and so competitive and fast and whereas an email can be a bit more personal and uh, yeah and I get really nice messages back from people that um it's just a way that a bit more long form I can sit down and just catch up with what's going on in my the project um at a bit more of a slow pace Mm -hmm. which I think is really suited to me and uh, yeah I have spoken to other people that are on it that enjoy and I have it with other artists as well that I am on their lists and sit down mm-hmm. and just something a bit more long form that you can just read read mm-hmm. what they're up to, what they're thinking, a few more stories about stuff and mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um I really like mailing lists for that. It's a really nice yeah, way Yeah, no, I think it is a really nice way of doing it because it's like you're so right, like so much on social, social media is like very just seconds. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's literally. Like, it's, it's not really... With there you can have a bit more of like a deep profound yeah and i think you can still get such amazing uh that connection through social media um it's just a bit it's just different mm-hmm. um like at the same time like as much as i'm saying that it is yeah there's other ways that social media can do what a mailing list mm-hmm. can't and you can have really yeah really nice connections with people on that mm-hmm. too but mm-hmm. yeah it's just the, the pace of it is lovely <laughs> And when you're like looking ahead into like the future for like you're already thinking about other projects and like doing this project has that made you already start thinking about oh what will I do next? Yeah, I think uh, and I guess we spoke about how the sound the sound of the album is like a band sound. Um, I think another thing that was really going through my head at the time of writing it um, was the la- playing it live. Because I was doing so much playing live at festivals and venues and stuff at that time. I just really wanted... Lots of the songs are like made specifically with playing live in mind. So a big thing for me over the next year is to play live as much as I can with the band or solo or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of energy in the album. And yeah, I just want to like get that energy out. Mm -hmm. Um, It feels like where it's meant to be is in, in a room with people. Cool. Is there anything else you wanted to mention? No, I felt like a good chat. Great. I didn't ramble on too much. Happy with that. Nice. Cool. As I said before, Lewis is going to take us out with one of his wonderful pieces of music. A couple more bits to talk about. Uh, The Imperial Electric Piano. We're so delighted that you you're enjoying that, and it's very much the first of a whole series of stuff that I'm going to be making in this very environment. For those of you who aren't aware, we've also released. Piano Rack, which is the first of a bunch of plugins that we're doing, which have a different outlook to developing plugins, where we're more focused on the instruments they're going to be applied on than the plugins themselves, if you know what I mean. So looking at how we can create a feature-rich processing suite for a particular class of instrument, as opposed to a plugin that is rich in features just for the sake of being rich in features. And finally, we've also done a price adjustment on the vertical piano. I have issued a statement regarding this, which is linked below. Uh, This is not indicative of our policy moving forward. We don't want, I can't ever promise that we will never, we may have to in order to save the bailiffs from the door, but my hope is we won't be doing sales and we'll be limiting the number of products we release on promo. I'm so lucky to share this space with such a talented team. And the idea of using that team's talents to create content that devalues what we make strikes me as somewhat oxymoronic. And there are many other reasons. 
but I'm not happy to have reduced the price of Vertical Piano, which is why those of you who have bought it full price would have been given Piano Rack for free, but also a 20 quid token. Now, some of you use that token to buy the Piano Rack. No, you don't need to do that. The Piano Rack should be in your app once you download it. Use the 20 quid token to buy, I don't know, Cosmos and uh, Circuit Drums or put it towards something in the future that you want to treat yourself to. And believe you me, there are plenty of treats coming. Right, as I said, possibly the last one of these podcasts in this format. I have a different idea and it's inspired by something that I'm going through at the moment, but also a gentleman called Rick Beato. The prize for this month's Composer Challenge is going to be a bunch of new merch that we're creating and maybe a couple of limited edition items alongside the next two products that we'll be releasing. And believe you me, I know what the first of those are. And you're going to want a slice of that. Thanks for watching to the end. And I'm really looking forward to Lewis playing us out. But if you haven't subscribed, small startup, it's our lifeblood. Please do and ding the bell to be notified the next time we put a video up. Good luck with the Composer Challenge and keep sending in your submissions for the Audio Inc. Sample Library collaboration. Please stick your name down on Eventbrite if you want to join us for the Town Hall on the 7th. And one of those, always much appreciated. Right, over to Lewis for another wonderful song and see you very soon. How many times have you heard someone say If I had his money I would do things my way But little they know That it's so hard to find A rich man in town With a satisfied mind Once I was winning In fortune and fame Everything I dreamed for To get a start in life's game And suddenly it happened I lost every dime But I'm richer by far With a satisfied mind Money can't buy back Your youth when you're old Or a friend when you're lonely Or a peace to your soul The wealthiest person Is a pauper at time Compared to the man With a satisfied mind When my life is over 
and my time has run out My friends and my loved ones I leave, there's no doubt But one thing's for certain When it comes my time I'm gonna leave this whole world With a satisfied mind I'm gonna leave this whole world With a satisfied mind